Hi, my name is Umnia. I'm the managing director of Brussels Global Review. And I'm currently in Egypt for uh, two months. Uh, super happy to be here. Thank you for having me. I would say that uh, I was always a very business oriented person ever since I was a child. Uh, it was my dream to be a businesswoman. <laughs> So yeah, I, I, when I started working in the corporate world, I focused on a sales career, which taught me a lot about uh, having your own uh, goals and being accountable and responsible for your own performance. And I learned that um, if you are disciplined and you have ambition, you can accomplish anything you want. So that's what I learned from the corporate world. And it really gave me confidence to start uh, my online presence and posting things on social media to help people uh, like me and particularly women who uh, also have this uh, ambition to become something uh, so that they can maybe learn something from my experience. So I am currently a managing uh, partner at a firm based in Brussels. Uh, it's called Brussels Global Review and we are focusing on sustainable developments and um, businesses that have a positive impact on society. And uh, basically what we do is that we bridge the gap between the European Union and uh, Africa, Middle East in terms of providing uh, economic content that shows clearly how this region is progressing towards uh, more sustainability. And we're also organizing lobbying events in Brussels uh, with key uh, EU institutions and stakeholders to inform them and also influence them to um, work more, invest more in, uh, in, this, in this region. I think it's a very exciting time for Egypt now that the big event COP27 will take place here hopefully next year in Sharm el Sheikh and that's an indicator that the government is very serious about sustainability but if you just look at the past uh, four years the infrastructure development in Egypt has been so impressive you've just inaugurated uh, the biggest wastewater treatment plant for agriculture. And that's a huge project for sustainability. You also have the Ben Ban Solar Park, which is one of the biggest in the world. The road infrastructure, the you know, clean, renewable energy. There is so much happening. Um, and even in terms of finance, the fact that Egypt is one of the first countries that started issuing green bonds in the region uh, is a great indicator that uh, there is a huge focus on sustainability. And that's why there is a very big appetite for international development agencies like the IFC, the EBRD. For them, Egypt is really one of the biggest focus that they have in the whole of Africa and Middle East. And I'm super excited and happy to see that now uh, there is a national strategy for human rights um, I'm very sure that Egypt will be a leading country in terms of human rights. Um, me as a woman personally uh, and a foreigner here, I feel very safe. I think that um, it's a great place for women to, to be in. Last year, Egypt had the highest amount of startup financing deals in the whole of the MENA region. This shows that the startup ecosystem is booming. There is a lot of room for startups, entrepreneurs, and there is also a lot of appetite for investments in these startups. Now, when you look at the specific segments where these startups are, they are mostly in the digital space. So whether it's financial technology or health technology, education technology, these are um, startups that are actually uh, filling a gap and uh, solving a real problem that not only Egypt has, but the whole of Africa. And uh, it's super interesting to see that the government is behind this uh, boom of startups with the regulations that they have implemented, uh, whether it's the um, national digital uh, strategy of the Ministry of ICT but also as I said they've changed a lot of regulations to make it easier 
for these, um, for these tech startups to, to boom. And to answer your question, I strongly believe that the need for startup is, of course, in financing and funding, but it's really what's going to define if a startup can make it is the mentorship. If they have guidance, if they have the right board members, people advising them. So if they are getting funding from banks, then there should be also a team of people to guide them and mentor them throughout the process. That's really what's going to make a difference between a successful and unsuccessful startup. The trend that I noticed on social media is that there is now this new uh, wave of uh, what we call creators. And creators are not the uh, influencer per se who um, you know, takes picture of themselves in order to get brand deals. Creators are people who are naturally creative, but also take it as a job. And they can really use and leverage social media to start a business out of it. They can um, start service companies, coaching. Uh, we see a lot of, uh, you know, yoga instructors who are using social media as a business. And that's a very positive thing because um, in every developed country, when you look at countries like Germany, who is the biggest, which is the biggest economy in Europe, 90% of their economy is focused on entrepreneurs and startups. So for a country like Egypt with a big population, really, if you want to talk about economic growth, you need to have a lot of entrepreneurs and social media now is the future for entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship. I think that it's difficult to explain to people that they can actually use social media in a serious way because in our region, um, I feel like social media is associated with silly things or just, you know, fashion, beauty. People don't consider platforms like Instagram or TikTok as business platforms, but they actually are a great way to uh, build your business. And there is still um, a challenge in people understanding that it's a serious platform or you can actually make money with your skills. Uh, no matter what skills you have. I don't think I ever really feel accomplished. Uh, I know it sounds a bit negative, but I, I guess I always try to look for new things to do. Uh, but at the same time, uh, just like go with the flow. I'm very happy that I was able to use the experience that I gained in the corporate world to gain the confidence to you know be a partner in a company and like use social media to help me in my business uh, so I would say the past year has been definitely one of the highest points in my life so far. <laughs> Honestly the real reason why I would like to uh, grow on my social media is to make uh, people and especially women understand that they can be more than just you know about beauty and it's not about their appearance you know that we, women are smart and they can use their intelligence you know for business things and and they can be CEOs and they can be number one they don't have to be you know other anything else than number one. <laughs>